And our fantasy buy, hold, sell, round eight. I am back. Biz, thank you for holding down the fort last week. Mate, was it a good week for you? And did you get Tommy Talau? No, I didn't get Tommy Talau, but I have Captain Hines finishing the week for me strong. Um, yeah, better week for me. Made up a few thousand ranks. This is the week, I reckon. I, I made some good trades last week. I got Jamin Jolifin as a pod. I didn't actually mention him on the podcast because I only found out about him later. Um, and he cracked out a good score. I got Angus in. Who else I got? I got Xavier Wilson in, so... Um, he did pretty well too. So yeah, it's on, on the good good trend for me. How about you, Lonnie? Oh, set, mate. Look, same here. I went from about 10K to about the, the high threes. Had a couple of bad weeks, Ooh. losing um, some players to injury. So yeah, like that to the week. Yeah. yeah, but it's all it's all back in the right direction. Uh, it, look, we've got a big week this week though. We're going to talk about uh, buys, hold, sells. We've got some pods. We've got the watch list at the end as well. Um, we'll talk about Tommy Talao as usual. Kellen Ponga, obviously he's right here. He is gone for three months so i'm just going to start this off by saying kaelin ponger is a sell before we even jump into this video uh, really bad news for him really bad news for footy but you know we still have the number one wing fullback in town tommy talau in the game um we'll be announcing the winner from the recent giveaway as well tommy talau i guess the score he got that 46 pointer a couple of weeks ago so 47 uh, wasn't it? Some respect wasn't it 47 maybe it 47 47 I have to double check. I've got to go through all those comments. Did, did I, 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 I wonder if anyone got that, seriously. Someone did. There were yeah, guests okay. all through the 40s, mate. Yeah, yeah someone okay. did. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's jump right in, though. So buys, and we'll just go back and forth here. I'm going to throw Nathan Cleary to you first because I know you're a big Cleary guy. Um, what do you think about buying him this week at that price? I reckon you get him in. His break even, what, 73? Well within the realm of possibilities. Um the thing with Cleary is he didn't start the season too well, but when he did get injured against the Broncos, he did score about 77 points. Um, I'm getting Cleary straight back in. Uh, you know, it's just, if you actually look at his games over 80 minutes last year, he averaged about 74, 75. He's priced at 67. So he's actually at a discount. Um, and we've seen with Hines that 89, 90 points, well within the realm of you know possibility. And Cowboys don't have a crash on defense this year. Could be a leaky game. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Cleary comes back with 100 here. So back in my team, maybe even as captain. Damn. I mean, if you're going to buy him, you got to captain him, right? Like that's, that's a short well, thing. Well, Hines, I mean, Hines yeah. has uh, Trindles out now. So Hines yeah. is a pretty red hot option. So anyway, tough one. I hate, I, I, I love having Cleary and Hines, but I hate that captaincy choice. I always get it wrong each week. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're probably going to go clearly, Cleary. Like that's if, if I was getting Cleary, I'm captaining Cleary. Um, double down on the pod, but Nico Hines without Trindle, it's about 10 points. I don't mind that. I'm going to throw up to Jaden Braley next. And look, I've got a few stats on him. 461K, he averages 50 points when he plays 70-plus minutes. Uh, he averages 53 without Ponga and 48 with Ponga, so he's not going to be affected by the Ponga news. Um, he's just in a spot where if he keeps getting 80 minutes and if he stays fit, he is a slam dunk buy. Those are big ifs, though, because he hasn't really been able to stay fit for a long time. Are you prioritizing this guy or skipping over him and going for someone of these other ones? So this week, my strategy is pretty simple. Get Cleary, get another gun, and cash down with so many cash he's available. But um, I really like Bradley. I've got him in like one of my – I've got one alternate team that I just mess around with pods, and I got Bradley in last week. 80 minutes, very positive signs. I like it. The only thing is Pong getting injured, but Crossland played in the halves, I believe with Gamble to full back or something like that. Um, mm. So, and he got 70 minutes the week before. So with Braley, you'll want to see 80 minutes. But um, I think, yeah, even if he's getting 70 minutes is value. So I could potentially wait a week just on him. But um, yeah, I like your analysis. It's good. I think he's a good buy. Yeah, he's a step above Lusick and Kenny and these sorts of guys oh, in my mind. Lusick. About... Ugh. <laughs> Brother, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, ugh. There are some yeah. Lusik owners, mate, and they're looking for what to do. Braley's a good shout. That's that's um, me, Lusik. I'm 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 kicking him to the curb. Anyway. Oh, he's been yeah. Twenty eight is very bad. Um, Toe Harris, seven seventy six k, pretty good price. Um, are you jumping on this? Do you think anyone else should jump on this? For mine, it's a little bit pricey for a guy who is a bit older and he's been scoring well. But any given week, a bit of a niggle, he could be rested in a pretty strong Warriors team. Yeah, that's a good point. But in terms of just his scoring output this year, he's played 80 minutes, I think, in every game except two, and one of them was due to a HIA. He's scored 60-plus in most games. Um, but, like, luckily his price hasn't shot up too much because of one game where he got 44. 
Um, so I actually really like it. I was actually surprised by his ownership because I was looking at Tohu, um, David Fafita, and Adam Fanua Blake this week. And Tohu is like a 5% or 6%. Adam Fanua Blake, I thought, would be more of a pot. He's actually at 10 or 11%. Um, I like Tohu or Fanua Blake over the coming weeks. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a good buy. But you're absolutely right that he has shown that he could pick up like a knock and take a couple of weeks out in the past. But that's with a lot of players. So I'd be happy to get Tohu in. Especially if Laban, and we'll talk about him later, but Laban comes into the starting side this week. If he impresses and earns minutes even when they're at full strength, that could hurt Tohu as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little off him, but it's not a bad shout. It just has potential to go downhill. Um, Ruben Garrick here, 537K. I've crammed him into this list for a couple of reasons. So he's dropped in price a ton, right? And last year when we got him for about 500K, we were pretty stoked. The thing about him is he's got a 70-point break even this week. And normally you'd say, oh, I'll wait a week on that. But then you remember who he's playing. He's playing Paramount Eagles this week, who uh, haven't been able to tackle anything. Our Paramount Eagles. <laughs> so I'm looking at him and just thinking, I reckon he could absolutely carve us to shreds. He did uh, last time, didn't he? What did he score against us last time? I just remember like 10 line breaks. against. Uh, I reckon it's more what? of a Saab day. Saab yeah. against uh, uh, Sebo could be really bad. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. In Supercoach, I'm vice-captaining Saab in my draft team. But oh. <laughs> last week, I vice-captained him too, and he, he cranked out like 100. I mean, um, yeah, look, Ostov got like 67 against us. So. Oh. Yeah. But look, Garrick, surely Garrick turns it up a bit. Um, I reckon we clamp on Turbo and we shut him down a bit, and then the outside backs just absolutely carve up. So, yeah, Garrick, oh, I think he my, – my bet is he beats his break even this week, which is 71 points. So it's a big call. You're very positive on the Paramount eye. I, 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 it's it's hard to get half back in four yeah. weeks. Yeah, yeah fair of, enough. I'm Paramount. And speaking um, of Paramount, Max Buff destroyed us last week somehow. Yeah, yeah. so depressed. Yeah, I'll you be more positive. I'll talk about Max Buff. Hey, look, no, Maxi <laughs> here. Um, 72 points odd last week at 569K. Question mm. is the minutes. The I think his PPM is really high. The thing is, they had Kenny Bromwich on the edge last week with uh, 30 odd minutes. They usually have 80 minute edges, like when Kapoos is there, Connolly's there, etc. Um, so I think his minutes were inflated. So I'm staying away from Max Bath because actually, if you look at all the other games, he plays about 45, 50 minutes. So it's, if he's getting 45, 50 minutes, I don't love it at that 570k mark. I would want to constantly see 60, 70 minutes. But Wayne Bennett traditionally always plays edge players for 80 minutes and is locked for like 50, 60. So that's always been his kind of mm. way he operates. So um, I personally will be skipping Max, but he could also be a home run hit that I'm just one week later or two weeks later since he's already at the 70 mark. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's getting a bit late now. Um, I've got him in against Supercoach Dream Team sides. I was so high on Max Plath. I've got him in a bunch of draft leagues as well just because of that dual position. So half and mid is fantastic. Um, in Supercoach, that 5'8 position is is super valuable as well. Um, but for fantasy, yeah, like you're saying, 50 minutes where well, he's going to be a 40 average at that position, it's not that exciting at that price. You can do a lot better. Um, now, if you want some riskier options, oops, let's go. Have you just what? popped that in there? <laughs> did I sneak to Lau in? <laughs> she did that on purpose for sure. Maybe. Uh, who, who are we holding or selling this week next? So, look, I think this is really, I brought this forward in the agenda this week um, because there's some tricky ones here. And a couple of these guys are in my team, a couple on your team. I think we've got full coverage of this list. I think I'll show these guys. So, yeah. Same same here, but I think different yeah. different Yeah, floors. different. Um, Jamin Salmon first, though, 425K. I think this is an easy, easy sell. And you could be tempted to hold on to him because he's been pretty good. His break-even is very sensible right now. But I'm looking at this, I'm thinking Jacob Preston comes back after the buy, and you've got a buy this week where he stagnates. Um, he could be a potential loophole option this week, but at 425K, I think he's done. I think he goes back to being a low-minutes lock. Uh, I just think it's over for Salmon once Preston comes back. You might as well cut tires now. You you might lose out on five or ten k, but uh, I'm pretty happy to let this one uh, sell off into the sunset. Yeah, I think um, I'm, I actually think I would hold on to Salmon another week or two, but 
that's just because I'd rather trade out guys like Joey Lusick. So anyway, um, yeah, Salmon, I think you're not losing that. Like You'd have to constantly hit 40 for the next few weeks to keep making a lot more money. And if you sell him now, you're probably only losing 50, 60K. And if you sell him to a cashy who's going to make 100K, then you like, there's so many cashies this week. So you could just cash down a salmon and then generate, yeah, you'll lose some cash from salmon, but you'll generate even more cash from like a Jaya Gray who might make 100K over the next two weeks. Or that's just an example, right? But I think Sam Hughes is a bit different. I mean, I think he's priced, at, you know, 60K lower. He's coming off a couple of big scores. Um, he has he did score a try, which is like inflating his score, but he's shown that he can score it close to one PPM. So I think with Sam Hughes and with Preston, like you're right on that, but they don't have that many mids, or at least good mids for the dogs. So I think Hughes can keep slow burning. And he does play around 13, I believe. I think Salmon does as well, but I don't know if it's worth keeping them to 13. Yeah, Hughes, different animal completely. Yeah. Um, lower break even requires less minutes, is unaffected by Preston coming back. It's just that Salmon, 80 minutes at edge, he was he's pretty good there. He goes back to being like a, a 36 minute lock who then plays yeah. center 20 minutes every week. And yeah, exactly. you know, he, he gets like 30 points in that first stint and then goes down to 25 at center. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, Hughes, Hughes is a good shout. Harry Grant, I'm gonna throw this to you because you're a Grant owner. Uh yeah. for me, I think he's a surefire hold. The other hookers have not been inspiring. Um, if I had Grant, I'd be sticking with him at the cut price. Yeah, Grant is annoying as hell right now because you bought him for like maybe 60 points, but he's just kind of low 50s, which is what a couple of other hookers are doing. Um, I would just hold because Grant, uh, they don't give him any of the try assists. Like he's had three or four assists where other players have got them, but they don't give it to Harry Grant. And he hasn't scored a try. I don't know. I think he's had one line break. There will be a game where Harry Grant, like, but, like you've, he'll just bust open the game and he'll score 80, 90, and his average will rock him back up. Just hold. It's not like there's great hooker options anyway. Like, if you, who are you selling him to? Like, Robson, he's doing the exact same thing. So just hold. If there was a bunch of good hookers, then I'd say sell and reinvest the cash elsewhere. But hooker is a pretty disgusting position this year. So, yeah, hold him. Yeah, it's rough. And even if you go Robson, they've come closer by 100K. This yeah. like this year so far, so you, you're just cashing down 100k compared to Blue Star Robson. You might as well stick with the pod. Um, you could also have fallen for the Mirage of Coruscant, for example, who has been an absolute dud since everyone said to buy him. We were pretty pretty off him. Neither of us got on that, but um, yeah, if I was going to go somewhere else, maybe Egan. If I didn't care about injuries or cash down the Jaden Braley, but I don't really think you need the money. There's enough cash outs this week. Stick with Harry Grant. That's that's the call from us. Pappenhausen and Gutho. Um, I'm going to speak on Gutho first here because I'm he's of the two. I own both these guys, but I'm looking a lot more at Gutho right now. Um, I think the injury that Gutho picked up has been really bad for him. So grabbed him before that 65 point game. He was absolutely dominant in that game. Has picked up an injury since that has really debilitated him. Um, he's obviously been carrying that knee injury, but just gotten a lot worse. So for me. An older player carrying an injury like that who's out of form in a team that's playing really bad footy, um, the signs aren't there. He's not as involved. His hands aren't on the ball as much. It's a pretty easy sell. And from my side, in terms of my team, I'm looking at Jamin Salmon and Clint Gutherson out, getting one of these cash cows we're going to talk about, and then maybe a Reese Walsh in. Because I'm looking at those fixtures for Walsh. Mm. They are red hot fixtures. You get five weeks of him, then you got Origin. You might as well just grab the points while you can. Um, for a guy who's in good form and yeah, rise up. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, there's just so many good uh, wing fullback cashies. So, but Reese Walsh could be a guy who 60, 70 for a few weeks for sure, but leading into Origin. Um, on Pappenhausen, last guy on this list, he's not he's not exciting this year. Like, well, sorry, he's exciting on the football field, but fantasy wise, he's just up or down. And when he's not scoring a try or two, he's scoring like 20, 30. Um, mm. I would be inclined to sell Pappenhausen for a, like a proper gun wing fullback, but he does have the Titans and the Rabbits in the next two weeks who are playing atrocious defense. Uh, so he could pop off big for both. And the Storm actually have a pretty good run up until their buy. So I would just hold him and reassess because um, I don't think there's an urgency to tell him. He could have two big scores. 
and he's only going to get better um, as he gets you know more games under his belt coming back from a, a long period where he was just injured constantly so um just hold pap there's you know you don't want to sell him this week and he busts off like two 70 plus scores against two weak sides so um he's a hold on Gutherson, actually, one thing to add, I've heard rumors that they're thinking of moving him to 5'8 or center to protect his knees just to get the mileage out because his, his knees are that bad right now. So even another reason to sell him. Ouch. That's that's so bad. Yeah. Um, ho- hopefully he can make I mean, he can make the move, right? He could play He could play in the halves for us. So, yeah. yeah Pappenhausen, I think Pappenhausen's firm. Like, just to stick with him, 575K, as long as he's fit, until the origin period, I'm, I'm riding that wave. Um, and you're going to take the high scores, the low scores. I think it'll balance out in a positive direction, like you were saying. Yeah. Um, especially with Cam Munster and Jerome Hughes back in the team. And Munster, he's only played two games. He's been a little bit dodgy when he's played. So I think they're just going to put it together, um, the Storm. And I think Pappenhaus is going to benefit pretty massively from that. Um, Pod's next. So, look, your boy, Jamin Jolliffe, we talked about him at, like, 535K uh, a oh, we did. Ago. We did. We did. Oh, interesting. That's good. You might have. I yeah. might have missed that episode because I don't remember. I don't oh. really remember it. So it's, it's maybe. I might have done that with Rob. So yeah, I had a yeah. whole page of this on oh, Titans players. Yeah, right. And Interesting. I didn't know. Like our picks there. were. Yeah. yeah. Our picks yeah. were Jolliffe. And then we were talking about potentially Randall. And we said if Aaron Clark gets the minutes, they were the three that we were excited about. So yeah. um, I've grabbed Jolliffe in basically every draft league, which has been an absolute savior for me. Yeah. But um, yeah, 634K. He's. He's been um, an absolute weapon. You got him last week. What was your rationale there? He was just playing big minutes. Um, he was, you know, his PPM over his career has been like 0.94 or 5. So it's pretty damn good PPM. And um, I just saw that he was playing 30 minutes a half, like for the last couple of weeks at prop. So uh, I I was like, if he gets 60 minutes, he might be a 50-55 guy. He was priced in the low 40s. I'm like, ah. But, you know, he's less than 1% ownership. I thought it would be fun to own. So, yeah, and he, he played 65 minutes. Um, HIA might have helped him. Like, he copped a HIA in like the 50-minute mm. mark. Um, that might have meant just he got a 15-minute rest and played out the rest of the game. But the positive sign was he played the fir- first 40 straight. Like, he didn't take a rest in the first half. So, they're clearly going to give him big minutes. They'll give him at least 60, and that's good enough to be a 50-55 guy. So, um, a lot of broken play in that game. Like a lot of stoppages because there was no defense played by either team, and um, he still got to fifty. So I, I'm happy with that. It's a it's a fun fun pod pick. He can score a try too. Has can, a yeah, try yeah. recently. Yeah, I know it's a, it's kind of strange, but yeah. Whoa. Well, you know what's weird too? He's 09 percent as of recording right now. So he's yeah. still under one percent. Like you said, big pod. It's fun, yeah. Uh, I'll throw another one in here, and I like this one a little bit more just because with Joel if. I hate when I see a guy and then I'm a bit late and, you know, I lose yeah. 100K out. So yeah, it would yeah. burn me too much to buy him. Scott Sorensen, though, I'm very interested in this. And well, I'll talk about the upside and the downside here. But for Soro, the upside is that he can average 60 points. He's on a very effective Penrith edge. I really like the fixtures they have coming up. And Cleary comes back in. Um, they're going to be at full strength firing. He's going to be feeding offloads out. Threw a really nice one for Alamotti last week, for example. Um, I just think we're going to see a fit and firing Scotty Sorensen at a discount price here at low 600s as well. The other side is he has the dual position. So you've got the edge and middle um, option for him, which right now we're copying injuries left, right, and center. So that is invaluable, especially with the um, the number of edges that we all have right now. Downside is that he may not play 80 minutes every week. So you've got Luke Garner hanging around on that bench like a bad odor. Uh, and Scotty Sorensen is just... He's primo, but he could easily get a rest in some of these easier fixtures that we're talking about. So as much as the attacking upside is there, I'm not certain that he's an 80-minute player every week. Um, I'll open the comment for you, man. Um, do you think he's as exciting as I do, or do you think not really? I think he's a good pick. Um, and we've seen that he's the type of player who can get on a hot scoring run as well, and he's got tries in him. Like He's actually a pretty good attacking player. So mm. I like it. Um, but I actually like Bateman a bit more just because... Bateman will be like his same price, uh, locked in for 80 minutes every week that he plays, right? And um, he's coming off a 70 point performance against, you know, the, the one of the best sides in the comp. Um, yeah, like if I'm if I'm to pick one of them at that price point, um, well, then you've got Nikora as well, who's a 602k, yeah. also on the edge. So 
That's why I, I put them I, all there. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, out of those, if you have to pick one, I'm probably picking Bateman and then probably Britton Nakora, then Sorensen. But I mean, the I outside would... of Bateman is good, right? Because at lock as well, we know what he does there. And yeah. Finer is a good edge too. Yeah. It's not like they're putting some scrub into the edge spot. I think Finer is going to take some dislodging. But does Bateman play 80 minutes at lock is my question. He did last year. Like, remember when we were yeah. one of the first ones to break it up? He's playing in the middle. So yeah, if yeah, exactly. It's but it's hard because he's fit enough to play. He's not a big guy, right? Like he can mm -hmm. he can play uh, eighty minutes in the middle, and his work rate is pretty good. So um, I'm actually thinking of getting him in this week potentially. You're kind of making me want to do it too. He'll he'll uh, get the dual position soon as well. I don't know if he'll get the dual position unless he stays there. But um, like if D if David Fafita gets benched, I might because I was planning to get David Fafita in. But if they start him on the bench again. I'm going to uh, maybe just get Bateman. Mate, Fafita. David Fafita has a 1.5% ownership. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take If I can get clear in for Fafita this week, I'll be so happy. The absolute pottery of that. Um, we'll talk about cash cows as well because you're going to have to get one of those guys, I'm guessing, to, to yeah, I'm gonna have to use it. Yeah, I'm going to have to use a cash cow. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> maybe a couple. Um, yeah. <laughs> Does that mean you're downgrading someone like uh, like a Ruben Potter or, or someone in that I'll, I'll be, I think I'm, I'm moving Ponga up to Cleary. And then out, I've got Lusick, who I want to move, Smithies, who I might want to move, and Tail and May, who I might want to move. Ooh. So one of them is going to be a gun, and the other is going to become a cash. So. I think Tail and May has got some pretty good fixtures coming up. So the same thing I was saying about Sorensen. I think it, it applies yeah. to him. I think he's almost a buy, actually, at the moment. Tail and May. Yeah. I mean, I hope he gets hot. But um, yeah, let's see. I've got, to, I've got to assess my team balance because there's so many good cashies this week so it's like uh yeah which ones am i going to jump on first like you know anyway, we'll get to them so for me Trent, also, by the way yeah. sorenson bateman nakora is my rankings you reckon so? oh yeah okay I, I mean i like all three but like the thing with nakora is he's the cheapest and the sharks are really good this year like they look really crisp um he yeah he it's a hard one to be honest i'd have bateman and First, and then Sorensen, Nikora equal. Bateman did average like fifty six last year. So, and the Tigers are better. So, I don't. He started off slow, but he he, he can hit his straps. So, oh, he could easily go red hot. I, I just worry, and I guess this is a bit hypocritical, right? But I worry about the injuries for yeah. Bateman, except yeah. niggles and yeah, like rests and you know, it's hypocritical, mate. Have you seen Sorensen's history? Yeah, <laughs> I, I just feel like Penrith are gonna. I don't, I don't own any of this Penrith team, and I just want to have a piece of it. That's that's my problem. My other thing there. Um, but yeah, anyway, look, you can go right with all those guys. Let us know in the comments who you picked out of these three or whatever else. Trey Fuller's the last one, just a dynamo. Um, obviously, he played a really, really bad Parramatta side last week, so you can't really read into that too much. But he's a bit of a freak. He's got, what, another four weeks with Hamaso out, and he's got the origin period where he plays a bit too, if you want to yeah. hold on there. But... He'll get a, a three, four more weeks, and then he'll get two weeks when Hamaso is playing. Um... Mm. Origin. The, the thing with Prefler is, yeah, he had a good game against a uh, terrible defensive effort from the Eels, but he also has averaged 50 plus in reserves for the last three weeks and uh, uh, last last three years. Um, and he also just passed the eye test. Like he was very involved. He was good defensively. He's he was around the ball. Like when he scored his try, he was on it in a flash. Like quick break, he was right there. Like I loved his support play. Um, yeah. There's just so many, like we're getting this good good segue into the cows, but there's just so many wing fullback cows that I don't as much as I want to own Trey Fuller, is he the best option when I can get like a KO Weeks for 250k or like a Jai Gray for 250k? Um, you know, Armstrong, all, all these guys, probably not. But I would do like Mitch Cram is in too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I couldn't choose five. Like there, there are so many we have to talk about. Well, there's a couple more. There's like Atkinson and stuff, right? Like for the yeah. Sharks. With Tr hey, Trimble sounds like he'll be gone for a while. Passed a, passed a drug. Like he failed a drug test, so it's probably out for a while mm -hmm. as well. So anyway. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good news behind this beer. Um, look, Jai Gray, first one here, and Jai Gray, Ko Weeks. You know these guys are both half eligible. Um, they'll both be wing fullback eligible eventually, but for Jai Gray, I'm looking at Jai Gray, and if he was wing fullback eligible right now, I'd think about taking that gamble. Now, a couple of plus points is that he looks like a super active player. Um, I, I like the talent. I like him. I don't like South Sydney. I don't like Latrell is back after two games. 
I don't like that his tryout for the fullback spot happens against Penrith and the Storm. Yeah. So oh, I think they could easily just get belted in these two games and he just gets shafted out of the team. And he's not a player who's going to play on the wing or at center, is my read. He's fullback or nothing, basically. So um, for Jai Gray, I'm not going to do it, but um, I can see why you would back the talent and it potentially could shine through. Yeah, I mean, Jai Gray, I think I will do it myself because he Ooh. he does have a 55 average in the reserves and he... It's not like Keeney where he averaged 55 in the reserves and he did nothing. Like, okay. He did pretty well. Like He was very involved, like seven tackle breaks, 100 and, like, what, 90 metres or something. I'm just getting that off the top of my hand. It could be wrong. But um, he passed the eye test. And I think the thing with Luttrell is he does have injury issues and suspension yeah. issues. And they've made it clear that Jai Gray is the guy who's going to step up into that role. They don't have Blake Tuff anymore. We've seen Blake Tuff play a lot of games, right? Because Mitchell spends a lot of time out for one reason or the other. So I think if, even if he um, doesn't, you know, even if he does not make it past the next two games, mm -hmm. I agree it's very tough fixtures. He'll probably play again later this year at some point, um, definitely over the origin period. So I'll probably go with him because if you don't get him this week, you can't get him, right? Because his break even is like, what, minus something and he'll get, yep. probably gain 30, 40K. Um, but Weeks is a lot safer option because they don't really have any other player who can play in the halves and, like, if you remember at the start of the year, it was a coin flip between Weeks and um, Strange. So now Fog's gone for 12 weeks. So Weeks will be there for, you know, three months. See, I worry about this because Weeks, he wasn't great last year when he got the first grade shot. Uh, I don't yeah. think it's going to be a good halves pairing. I think it's going to be really no. bad. They were yeah. very Foggity reliant. It's just like eventually Strange is going to be that guy. And Weeks could potentially turn to that guy too. But as of today, it's one of the worst halves pairings I've ever seen in my life. Um, <laughs> ben Roberts, uh, Luke Kelly. No? I did mention that in the chat today, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I lived through the Sandow, Roberts, Kelly, Robson. Yeah, you know, Paramount, mate. But look, for KO Weeks, Jai Gray and Tommy Talao, um, if you had to rank the three, which what would be your order here? Like an overall ranking or just in terms of scoring potential? I don't Fantasy know. by potential. Um, That's about 290k right now, so he's primed. Probably this week. <laughs> Talk about the um, Talal's last. I would go gray over weeks this week. But overall, I'd say weeks are higher than gray. Because the thing with gray is it's like this week or never. With weeks, you mm. can wait a week. I'm saying a lot of weeks, but like you, you can know, wait a week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can wait a week, but I think because yeah. he needs a score to get his price moving. Um, and if Strange does all the kicking, and Weeks is just a guy who's just running the ball, then you could potentially skip him. But I mean, I'll probably, I'll probably get both Gray and Weeks, but I'll get Gray this week and Weeks next week. Weeky, weeky, week. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. See, I'm thinking the same wow. thing on weeks. I'm probably going to miss Gray. Um, I just think his tryout period is too rough in the South City team. is going to get dominated in these games. But Kay Wicks, yeah, look, if he can come out and play some decent footy and they split it half and half, which I think is what will happen. And we don't see Ethan Sanders perform really well, for example. Like, if Sanders comes out and plays well, then they'll be pushing for that early swap. Mm, that's um, true. Parramatta, because they're yeah. signed him up. He's yeah, the yeah. Half back, no, so. actually, I, I, I forgot to mention that. that's actually a great point. Like that, I can see that happening for sure. Yeah, well, and Para don't prioritize him, right? Yeah. Or there's talk of a Sexton trade. There's there's talk of a few other things. You know, Cogger just got dropped. Yeah. Um, I, I just think if I was running Canberra, which I'm so far away from doing, uh, I would, <laughs> I would, in my infinite wisdom, be looking at getting a senior halfback who can kind of steer the team around so that Ethan Strange can continue to develop the way he's been doing. Because the role he's been playing next to Fogarty has been fantastic for him. If you yeah. drop him into this this big role, and they're behind a good forward pack still, I just think they're going to struggle. I think they're going to suck. Um, yeah. Especially with Chevy at fullback as well. He's a rookie too. No diss on these guys long term, but for right now, you know, Levi's your hooker. It's it's not a great spine uh, no. as of today, but it could grow yeah. into one. Yeah. We'll power through the other names on this list. Um, Biakora, same as same thesis as what we started the year off at. Like we were all on him at 400k. He's now 360k. Like he's a great option because 
you know, Jaden Hunt is not like he's going to steal minutes from Piacora. I think Piacora goes back to an 80 minute role. Um, I just held him because he wasn't really worth trading. So great. Can plug him onto my interchange this week. He should right. be safe for a 35 40 average. Um, uh, he's an easy one. 45. Okay, maybe. I mean, Broncos are back in form. So hopefully, in, you, like you said, with their fixtures, right. maybe. He's red um, hot. He's red hot. Red the rest hot. of these yeah. guys, we'll talk about them in one go. So Armstrong, yeah. he's not the preferred fullback in reserve grade. I don't think he will be the preferred fullback long term at first grade. I'd skip him. Laban, it's a short injury to Capewell. So he's a skip for me. But if you did want to just back the talent, 230K, cash out. I don't hate that move. It could work out long term. Uh, McKaylee. The problem is Lukey comes back next week. So someone will slide out of that team and there are no back rowers to slide out, basically. So one of the middles is going to slide out. Michele's the last one in. He might be the last one out. Um, great PPM, though. So if you want to back the talent again, more for fantasy talent rather than real-life talent, he's a good shout. And then Sasangi, very diverse player. Um, Whitehead could be back very soon. So I'm not confident on the minutes, but I do like his center slash half eligibility. So, again, if you want to take that risk, I think he's about 290K and Michele is 260, so I've just put 275 yeah. there. But, yeah. Any any disagreement there? No, I think the, the other one that we mentioned already is that Vincent um, playing in the halves mm. with Hines. Um, I think you could – they rated him pretty highly. You could watch a week probably just because he's not going to do much playmaking, right? Like, he's going to – he could – he could be a very passive player, so he just you could wait a week on him, and also just while you're getting more information on Trindle. Is there any other yep. cash news this week? I don't know. It feels like there's a million more. Um, there's, there's a few. There's around, probably a few. Um, yeah, like Gag Eyes back for South. So. Yeah, yeah. There was a few more. Let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me let me quickly flick that we're not we're not missing anyone because uh, I don't want the there's viewers so to, to cry. Yeah, let's see. There's. I mean, you can talk about all the camera. Right, we've got weeks. Like, we've got Armstrong. We've got Arredo, Sanders and... for Para. I mean, he's probably a rental. Like, how long is Sanders oh, going to be? There? Is he going to keep the Sanders, spot? Right here. Watch list. So, Paramount oh, okay. will buy next week. Yeah, so, for yeah. me, 230K. Yeah. yeah. Paramount have changed halfbacks yeah. twice a week, basically. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. um, give him a week. If he plays really well this week, then he's a good shout. But if not, then don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, well, we'll power through this watch list. Mazu, God, he's been playing poorly, huh? And with no Ponga, I don't love it anymore because he scored a lot of points off Ponga Brilliant last year. So side point, he averages higher without Ponga. What? No Ponga. way. I find that like so hard. Like a six-game sample size. It's, wow. it's very stats, weird. Stats, bro. It's, okay. it's super weird. Look, I'm just, I'm just saying that's the meta. That's the meta, all right? Well, fair enough. I mean, he could be an option next week or the week after for sure. Um, oh, yeah. He dropped like 60K this week. Yeah. So he'll yeah. get to 400 and something, and we'll, I'm going to buy him at that yeah. price. Yeah, I think, yeah, he's a type of guy you'd love to pick up cheap and then before everyone else does. Yeah. The problem with these players is that we did we said it with DC a couple of weeks ago. It's like, don't wait for them to go on their big score. Like, just when you th see a fixture that you think this is the one they'll explode, like get them and you're one week ahead of everyone else and everyone else is chasing. Um, Sam Walker, yeah, watch like he was really good last year in fantasy. Um, he's just copped so many HIAs this year. Uh, he'll have another good drop or two and get him in. Not just Sam Walker, but Dom Young as well. Um, mm. Dom Young, it will, could be a guy at 400. Oh, yeah. 50k uh, that I'd love to have when, when roosters kind of get hot. Cody Walker, I'll let you talk about him. Oh, look, um, he's the same, right? If you back Stouts, you back him. Yeah. I like Sam Walker a lot more. Um, yeah. But Luke Brooks is around this price as well. So if through the origin period you were thinking DC is going to be out a bit, um, Brooks could be a shout when he gets down to about 400k, which is really weird considering everyone was talking about it as a fantasy option and went very quiet about that. As soon Remember as when we did the thing. top 10 video? At the start of the year, oh, after Brooks. week one, and Luke I Brooks where they are now. Teams. We can oh go search God. their team. Actually, I'm not going to yeah. go. I want to change. That's me. Yeah. Uh, what if they're still there? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, they are. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. What if they're still there? Yeah. Mate, Simo, 389K. Um, he's cheap. He's on the wing still, so I'm not excited about it. But if he plays center, he averages about 40 points. And I was going to say Parra's a good team. They're not a really good team right now, but they will be a good team one day. Moses will um, come back. To, yeah, they'll, like yeah. Paramount is the type of team who'll be trash for like a few weeks and then all of a sudden get on a hot run for four weeks and then be trash again. And They love just yeah. giving you some, hot, you know, like they started the year so well, right? And then psh, Moses got hurt, it's gone. Right. And they beat the Cowboys and then back to trash and then yeah. watch they'll probably win this week very comprehensively somehow and go back to trash. So. Yeah. Yeah. Similar DPP. He's a yeah. lot better than the other guys at that price because you've got guys like, like Khan Ferreira, 
like these sorts of players. Like Simo has a much stronger base than these guys. Yeah. He's had a few HIAs. So yeah. yeah, keep an eye on these guys. Quick summary for you. So the buys, if you can get Nathan Cleary, that's sick. Jaden Braley is surefire. We really like that. Um, if you really think Parramatta suck, then go for Ruben Garrick <laughs> as well. Plus, <laughs> if you like the talent, if you get 60 to 70 minutes, do that. Tohu, if you want to pay up. Um, for the sells, you can really sell any of these guys, but I think the ones we were firm on were holding the middle three. I'm selling Salmon and Gutho myself. Um, and then, yeah, pods, any of these guys are good shouts, but Trey Full is probably the one that we would skip. The rest of them, mm. don't get all of them, but yeah. you can pick one of these guys in the top four. They're probably going to overperform for their price. That's pretty much the clip notes on this, right? That was good. That was really good. Good sesh. I got a jet, um, but Longy, great recording with you. Good luck this week, and let's hope Gary doesn't kill Parramatta like we expect. And cheers for hopping on after your uh, late night at the Veronica's. Yeah, uh, appreciate you. Oh, mate, the Veronica's played in New York last night. Such a good set. Love the Veronica's. That's so good. See you, Longy. Right, see you, everyone. Good luck this week. See you, Biz.